speaker, Sherry Ottinger, also known as the Tennessee Dirt Girl. Anybody heard of her before? Anybody seen her Facebook page and, and all that? So um, I think five days a week she has um, topics and questions and answers and, and uh, things put on there. So she's a, a wonderful lady. She's very passionate about the dirt. I don't know if you'll find anybody else more passionate about the dirt than Sherry is. Um, and she's only been doing it as long as dirt's been around. No, I'm sorry, not really. <laughs> but she, you know, when you listen to her, she is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to plants, when it comes to weeds, when it comes to animals, when it comes to the soil, when it comes to the bug life, the, the biological everything. I mean, and if she doesn't know it, let me tell you what she will find out, okay? So a uh, great wealth of information. She's gonna talk to us a little bit about the farm campus here, and I had alluded to some of that um, early on. So, Sherry, come on up here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello, so good to see everybody here. Thank you for coming out. Turn it down, Robbie, Lord. It's, it's great to see all the uh, high schoolers here too. I'm tickled to see you there. Thank your uh, teachers for letting you come out. I hope you've learned something. Do you feel like you've picked up anything? Excellent. Uh, and I know the teachers and the schools are rec um, recognized. I want to recognize another person um, who is our representative of Tusculum College. And I'm going to screw her name up. I know I am. Susan Montelioni. Yeah, she is the earth science, one of the earth science professors at UT. And uh, we are tickled to have her here and hope that her influence over some of her people can get some help out here in the... Uh, in the uh, farm campus. You know why I'm holding this. I'm the Segway. And that's also what you call an usher at the church, you know, when church is over. And the preacher pulls the bla plates out and they start walking up and down the aisles and they hand you the plate. And everybody's supposed to have their heads bowed and they're supposed to be, you know, being pious and not paying any attention. But I promise you, the people around you are watching how much money you put in that plate. And they're going to talk about it when they go home. So I'm the usher, I'm the plate passer, I'm the preacher. I'm not going to pass it, but I want you guys to know that the USA RAAI, our nonprofit, functions on donations. It functions on memberships. It functions on people like you. Anybody in here bend over and pick a penny up in the, in the parking lot? You know, I know y'all young, young people don't do that, but we do. My mama used to say, takes a hundred pennies to make a dollar. And I've got a little jar at the house, all my pennies go in, and I pick up a penny or a quarter or a dollar, and my husband found a 20 one day. I think he, he lied to me about that, but anyway, um, yeah. Your pennies count, your quarters count, your nickels count. There's one back there, I'm fixing to hand it off here to Robbie, <laughs> for him to take back there and put on the table so somebody can come get it. Um, because I would love to see you, if you've not got 50 cents, 50 cents helps. If you've got a dollar, it helps. If you can join us in a membership, $10 a month, it's fantastic. It's not cheap to put on a show like this. Um, the food is top rate. Uh, the service is wonderful. The, uh, the people are taking care of you, and when you all go home and you already sit down to watch Jeopardy, we're still going to be here cleaning up. Thank you, sir. So um, I'm really looking. I'm going to be counting. I'm on, and I'm going to be the, uh, the, your neighbor at church watching how many dollars you put in that basket. In the back of your little book there, you've got a place. It's got my picture. And it's got a place for notes. And I'm going to start. I, I love questions. I love to be asked questions. And I love to be able to say I don't know, but I'll find out. 
I also love to give you things to think about. The questions I'm going to ask you here, I'd like for you just to jot down back there where my face is so you'll know I'm the one asked you the questions. It's in the back of the book. These are thoughtful things. I'm meditative and I like to sit. My husband's a long haul trucker, so I've got a lot of time with the goats and the chickens and the ducks. So and I like to think about things, you know, in long term, not just, not just uh, today. What matters to you? And I'd like for you to get it more basic than um, your job, more basic than your crop. I'd like for you to really think about what really, really matters. You know, I know a lot of people that make fun of me because I, um, I don't like you putting out chemicals. I don't like you killing stuff. Um, if, if I, uh, I go, my husband's a big hunter, big game hunter. We go and, and he kills something. I have one request for him. I'll take your pictures. I'll go with you. I'll hoorah. But that better be a kill shot. The first shot better be a kill shot. That's what I tell him, and it always has been. Uh, we were uh, at a big buffalo hunt one, day, one time, and the buffalo fell, and I was so um, in awe of the majesty of the animal. And I've got, a, you know, I've got a thing. I start crying, and I go over, and I get down on the ground, and I thank that animal for its life. Native Americans did that. It's called gratitude. We've forgotten to be grateful. If... You rock along in life and you're doing things that are not kind to the earth. You're killing the soil. You're killing the microbes. You're killing the bugs. Ultimately, you're killing yourself and your friends. You got cows that run in the farm ponds and muck it up and down it goes down Lick Creek. Well, it comes up in my sink. I've got health issues that are involved with the environment. That's kind of strange, isn't it? How many of us would get really, really bent out of shape if we found out our precious grandbaby had an environmentally related illness that probably was going to kill him? I've seen it flip so fast. So, what matters to you? Are you aware of your dependence on natural resources for your life today? You don't have a choice. I don't care if you're, what's his name, Zuckerberg, uh, Elon Musk. I don't care if you're a billionaire. Without food, water, and air, you're going to die. So you are completely, totally reliant on natural resources. What do you do, little or large, and everybody's involved? I don't care if you've got a little bitty garden. If you've got an apartment, if you've got a, a 50,000-acre ranch, it doesn't matter to me. There are things that you can do every single day that will mitigate your footprint. Do you know what your footprint is? Everybody in here understand what a footprint is? It's your impact on the environment. What did you do today that can make a difference in a good way? It don't have to cost you anything but your time and your thought. Instead of tossing it in the trash, put it in the recycle. Regenerative agriculture is, leave a blank. Regenerative agriculture is. There are many people who think that regenerative agriculture is only livestock. There are people who think regenerative agriculture is only row crop. I'm here to tell you that it's every single solitary thing on this planet that's regenerative agriculture. That's what's impacted. I was reading a thing the other day about wildlife, uh, waterfowl, and the problems that they're having. Uh, it was a Ducks Unlimited piece, if any of you are in the Ducks Unlimited groups. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's scary on the one hand, and it's in, in, it's, it kind of builds you up a little bit on the other hand. There's so many of the young people that have got involved in these, and I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm so grateful to see the young people involved in anything with the agriculture. Thank you very much. Do you make resolutions? 
Don't answer me. This is for you. I do too. You know what my resolutions are? Do better this year than I did last year. That's it. I'm not looking for any great big nothing. I want to do better this year on benefits to you and you and you than I did last year because my life affects you. And oh, by the way, your life affects me too. We have a campus out here. I don't know if any of you have seen it. If you get an opportunity when you drive out today, um, take an extra minute or two. It's right around the corner over here. It's a beautiful campus. It's called the Farm Campus. It is the brainchild of our major benefactor, Russ Israel. The Israel family have put a lot of money into that farm campus there. We have a greenhouse, we have a high tunnel, we have a low tunnel. Um, thank goodness we've got a builder named Gary Johnson. I don't, he's here somewhere. Um, and he's taking care of pulling things together for us. Funny thing though, uh, we've got a, a finish telling you what we've got out there, the, the little greenhouse, the high tunnel, the low tunnel. Um, we've got an open garden. We have raised beds. We have apple trees. We have fruit trees out there. We have some nut trees. Strange thing, though. Things need humans. Projects need humans. And you know, I've had a hard time even finding people to come to my house and work because I've got a really, really, I'm a mama. So I've got these really tight ideas about what you need to be doing if you're outside. If I put you out there to weed, you better be weeding. I don't want you worrying about your knees on your clean britches. I don't want you worrying about your fingernails. I don't want to see you pick up that telephone. I don't want you asking for a break every 10 minutes. Don't tell me it's hot. Don't tell me you're sweating. Don't tell me you got a splinter. Get it done. That is life, people. I was born in the 1950s. I worked. They did not ask me did I want to. There were no cell phones. I didn't have that. I went barefooted all summer long. I got stung, I sunburnt. Mama said, get over it. You know, you think about the changes that have come just in my lifetime, and it's scary to me. You all are the ones that's gonna be deciding my tomorrow. You are the ones deciding if food's going to be grown in a CAFO. And if you don't know what a CAFO is, look it up, it's one of my thorns. C-A-F-O, it's an acronym. If you don't know what it is, look it up. And then look at the pictures that are attached to it. Industrial farming is not tomorrow. We've got to learn to take care of ourselves and those around us. In the last few years, those are, I mean in the last two years, those are some things that have become really obvious, haven't they? Go to the grocery store and there's no meat there. Well, I don't buy meat at the grocery store anyway. I buy it from Wayne Hughes and I buy it from Double M Farms. Um, and, and when there's uh, some South Pole meat from here, I'll be buying some from Russ, from the nonprofit. The point is, we've got an opportunity sitting out here for some young people. My health will not allow me to do that. We need some young people that are dedicated, that are willing to put in time. Yes, you'll be paid. I don't know how much. It's not my job. Um, but there is a criteria. If you're interested, I have a list of the criteria. Mr. Israel has a list. Mike has a list. Um, and, uh, and Professor Montolion back there does. So if there's anybody that's interested in taking on this project, that would be fantastic. If any of you older people have kids at home, have 20-somethings and 30-somethings that don't have a job, that would like to do something meaningful, that's a great opportunity. I'd like for all of you, if you've got an opportunity, go out there and look. If you, uh, on a day when it's not raining and snowing, you can come back down here and walk. It's not locked up. You can go over there and look and see what's going on. Another dream of Russ is to have a mushroom trailer. 
completely outfitted to grow mushrooms. Fantastic idea. You know what you need? Anybody can tell me what you need? People. Humans. We need humans. Again, if that sounds like something you're interested in, in a long-term way, see one of us afterwards. We'd be tickled to death to, to hook you up. Um, I don't think you'll be sorry. Anybody getting in on the ground floor of anything and being able to watch it grow, the, the, uh, the inner joy, satisfaction that you get from being able to watch something from the ground up, it's pretty amazing. As a segue, just for a second, I want to tell you, did you know that it takes 364 licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Bet you didn't know that. Did you know mobile phones are dirtier than toilet seats? This is a fact. Ten times more bacteria, and there are more than 6 billion cell phones, and there's only 2.5 billion toilets. And 270,000 trees are cut down every day for toilet paper. Those are just little bits of information. I love stuff like that. You remember when the toilet paper was hard to find? Didn't scare me none. I grew up using corn cobs newspaper. I can use a washcloth. I know what soap and water is. A lot of people don't. It really makes my heart glad to see you all here, every face, because each one of you indicates that you are interested in regenerative agriculture. Regenerative, the word, it doesn't mean just one thing. Regenerative is revitalizing. It's bringing back to life. It's giving back what was already there. It's backing off and seeing what it's going to do. How many of you know who Gabe Brown is? Gabe Brown is my rock star. Love Gabe Brown. Met him at the 2019 summit. I won a book. I already had one because I had one that I won at the first summit. I won a second book. Did you know that, Mike? Sure did. You're not getting it, though. My second copy of Dirt to Soil is sitting right beside my first copy of Dirt to Soil. If you have not read that book, you need to find it. You young people, if you've not read Dirt to Soil by Gabe Brown, tell your teacher to get it bought and y'all pass it around and read it. Fantastic story. Um, you know, if you, if you want to, you can look him up on YouTube. He just won the 2021 Heinz Award for his earthiness, his basic way of presenting things and, and taking it from the ground up. I don't know um, much more to tell you about what we have out here. Let's see what I wrote down. I'm like, I'm like a preacher. If I don't stick with my notes, I get way off. We've got fruit trees, a beehive. We have irrigation, propane, raised beds, an in-ground garden, uh, rotational pasture fencing, and we're waiting for a grounds manager, um, preferably 40-hour-a-week full-time grounds manager. But we would take two 20s or however people start. Then you start fig figuring with numbers, and I'm out of the game. This person must have a love for the soil, a working knowledge of garden and greenhouses, understanding of healthy earth regenerative practices, and an ability to work steady and unsupervised, yet not be afraid to ask questions. They can't be afraid of blisters, broken fingernails, splinters, thorns, or bees, or getting their clothes dirty or wet, or long, unpredictable hours during the growing season. They should feel comfortable with speaking and teaching about what they know and love because we hope to have others wanting to help. They should be teaching. Russ's vision is for this place to become a gathering place. I want you to think about it and think about the things I've told you about your part on what this earth is. Some of you may look at the regenerative agriculture from the perspective of a cattleman. Look at it from a different perspective of a garden. I know people who are in wheelchairs and their regenerative agriculture is pots on their porch and they grow their tomatoes and peppers there. 
That's regenerative agriculture for them. Oh, by the way, they grow bees for the pollinator, or grow pollinators for the bees. Did I say that right? Yeah, pollinators for the bees. So regenerative agriculture covers everything that your life could possibly touch, every single aspect of it, from when you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night. Please think about someone you might be able to recommend us to. Don't forget that we are a nonprofit. We function on donations and memberships. We function on volunteers. If you know anybody out there that might be interested in taking on the farm campus, please let one of us know. In the meantime, I am... Um, I'm, I can't smell or taste, so I don't know if anything smells. Does it smell good? Can you smell? Uh, they've got a mighty fine dinner over there. Um, potato soup and chili and all the trimmings. We're glad you're here. The donation baskets are sitting there. Please, whatever your heart will let you give, please give it. And I so appreciate every single one of you for being here today. Any questions for Sherry? Anybody? All right. Sherry, thank you so much. Great job. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. I got one. She's on YouTube, correct? Is that, is that the no, podcast? No, I am not. What, you said Tennessee Dirt Girl. What do you do? It's I am Facebook. I write for the Greenville Sun. Oh, so you're on Facebook. So if they want to find you... They'll find me on USA Regenerative Agricultural Alliance Facebook page. I okay. write on it Monday through Friday. I answer questions. I post topics concerning anything and everything about the soil. And then I put on visuals. A lot of times it's Greg Judy. Sometimes it's um, Gabe. Just different things that I can put on there. But I love it if people come on there and check me out, like, follow, and share. That's how Facebook does what it does. Um, I really don't care. I just do what I do. Anything else, Robbie? I'm just making sure you didn't quite, I was like, how would they find you? Tennessee they, can, they can also yeah. find me in the accent section of the Greenville Sun on Wednesdays. Been writing that for 16 years. All right, you got your answer. <laughs> Thank you.